Okay, good morning friends and Moto family. Welcome to another MC Commute. My name is Zach and I'm gonna ride to the office with you on board. Today's guest is uh, an Italian friend of ours. That's a Dorso Duro 900 from Aprilia. And if you're thinking, hey, I thought the Dorso Duro was a 750 or a 1200, you know, you're not that far off. Those are definitely things that happened. So we'll talk about the evolution of the Dorso Duro, what it feels like to ride, how much gas it holds, uh, how it wheelies maybe, I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there, as we ride to the office, starting now. Alrighty, Supermoto time. Whatever happened to Supermotos anyway? They were like a big thing, weren't they? And then like, they stopped being a big thing? They didn't stop being fun, that's for sure. Yeah, so, uh, Dorsa Duro 900. Uh, you can tell it's a 900 because, uh, it says it right there. Other than that, there's, uh, not a lot of identifying characteristics of the new engine, I don't think. Red, uh, valve covers. Yeah, what else do you need to know? Upside down fork, a uh, little Supermoto beak, uh, Dunlop tires, you get, uh, radial brakes, uh, undertail exhaust, things. Check out this uh, cool dash. This is a cool part of the bike. 4.3 inch TFT. And uh, pretty standard. Other than that, okay, your Dorso Duro Basics got 896 cc engine. Like I said, basically the same engine from the Dorso Duro 750 and Shiver 750. It's essentially the same architecture. So yeah, same bore, longer stroke, slightly more displacement, 896 cc's, and 83 horsepower, something like that. Other notable specs, 485 pounds on our scale with a full tank of gas at 3.1 gallons or something like that, a little over three gallons. So it doesn't hold very much gas, but it's still pretty heavy. If 485 sounds like a lot, it kinda is. That is actually five pounds heavier than Aprilia's own Tuono 1100. And the Tuono 1100 makes a little bit more power. <laughs> like twice as much. Mm, not quite twice as much, but almost. It's a little heavy for what it is. Um, part of that's probably that big undertail exhaust system. Exhaust can be kind of heavy these days, um, and depending on how much of the emissions architecture is um, structured in the muffler or in the midpipe or whatever, exhaust can be pretty heavy. Other than that, like you guys probably don't really care much about uh, specifications, right? You can look all that up somewhere else. Plus, the bike's about simplicity, sort of, right? That's the Supermoto thing. It's like uh, no, you know, no bodywork. Um, just like a long suspension and um, a rowdy motor and a handlebar to control it. And actually while we're on the topic of supermotos, I think that this style of bike might be one of the best commuter style bikes that you can purchase. I mean long suspension is good if you're in a city because it soaks up bumps. Uh, long suspension is sort of good anywhere. Uh, if your inseam allows it. Um, and yeah, it's comfortable. You sit upright. There's plenty of leg room. Uh, you're, yeah, I don't know. You like can see over traffic a little bit. It's just a, it's a good setup. <laughs> Had a little stoplight. We can talk about this dash. We're gonna talk about this dash. Uh, 4.3 inch TFT display. A little bar tack across the top uh, and a bunch of um, yeah, like uh, instant MPG, um, all, all the mumbo jumbo that you would expect in this situation. Um, there's throttle modes down here, we can talk about that in a minute. I have it in tour right now because that's what I prefer. Trash control, which I have off because uh, you know me. But yeah, it's a it's a mighty handsome, mighty handsome dash and uh, goes colors invert um, at night so the background is black and the 
digits are white, so it's not so bright. Pretty smart. Pretty standard. Pretty smart. Um, oop, I'm gonna go through this screen light here. First thing's foist. Crap. I also think the dorso sounds pretty good. I don't know, like, I always, I'm always surprised that, like, um, oh, FZ07 sounds real good. SV650 sounds pretty good. But, like, it's sort of rare that you get a, I don't know, a twin that really, like, has a nice throaty growl from the factory. Um, other than sort of high-end stuff. I don't know, I think Panigales sound pretty cool. But, yeah, it sounds a little tinny, I think, when you, uh, I don't know, if you just rev it up in a parking lot, it just kind of doesn't sound like it has much meat behind it. But when you're out on the road like this and you give it a little... Crap! I think it sounds good. This is red light. We always catch this red light. So we can talk about binders. Come stand with ABS, as is tradition these days. The brakes are good. I think they're, they're pretty good. Not a, lot of, uh, not a lot of bite right away, you know? I like I like a brake that really just kind of a real light squeeze and you get pretty good response right away. But bikes oftentimes don't really have that. But once you give these things a pinch, they're pretty good. Uh, the brakes are not Brembo's, I assume, because they don't say Brembo on them. Usually, if the brakes are made by Brembo, that's what it says. But they say Aprilia on them, so they're probably made somewhere else. I couldn't actually get Aprilia to tell me where the brakes are from. But anyway, they work fine. Which is the whole frickin' point. Chop, chop, chop. DIY quick shifter. If you want to do that. No real quick shifter. And the gas light's on. As some of you eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed. 87.2 miles on trip one. Which I reset every time I fill up on gas. So the point is, the fuel light came on with 80 miles on the trip. That's not very far. 87.3 miles divided by 2.414 equals 36 mpg and 2.4 gallons so that means there's another three quarters of a gallon to go in this bed now before I actually needed to get gas but still I feel like coming on 80 miles is a bit tricky. Okay we're back underway Ooh, versus 650 good choice my friend shorts not as good a choice though crap <laughs> traffic not so bad today but still gonna jump in that carpool lane because even when traffic's not so bad California traffic still a thing so yeah not a ton of wind protection but that's just the way the gun with supermotos and uh, frankly I think it's worth it if you rode on freeway all day long you'd probably get sick of it but aside from that it's not so bad plus got that big flat seat so you can just sort of slide back if you want to and lean into the wind a little bit more or slide forward it's uh yeah it's very accommodating in general in my opinion a couple quick things that i think are noting and that's to compare this bike to the shiver 900 the shiver is the naked bike same frame same uh wheels same engine uh slightly different suspension obviously different uh setups or different handlebar and uh, seat rear subframe uh, it looks like a very different bike it shares a lot of the same components um, and uh, there are some few key differences between the dorso duro and the shiver that the dorso duro has a 15 tooth front sprocket on the counter shaft that's one five and the shiver has a 16 that's one six and what that means is it's geared a little bit taller of course and i think it's much better on the freeway but also just sort of around town in general i just think i prefer it i also think i prefer the shiver shift linkage for some reason the dorso shift linkage is like uh just a little bit bulky it's like kind of hard to find neutral from second gear from above i don't know it's like little stuff like that i just find the the shiver i think the setup is, uh, has a little bit better mechanical advantage and it works a little bit better. I also think day to day, frankly, I love supermotos, but I would probably just get a shiver if it was my money because the shiver is, after all, cheaper, which we will talk about at the end of the program. Acceleration test here, 50 miles an hour, third gear, wide open, brap, brap, brap. 
I mean, it's a pretty fast bike. It's not, uh, whatever, yeah. It's not greased lightning, but it's, it's quick, it's fun. The smaller front sprocket does give a little bit more advantage when it comes to uh, acceleration in sixth gear, like sort of top gear roll on, you know? Uh, the uh, that smaller front sprocket means the bike's revving a little bit higher. Also, worse gas mileage. So we got 36 on that fuel stop with this bad Nelly, but it was more like 40, a little bit closer to 40 with the shiver. Which, yeah, a little better. Makes sense. Geared a little bit taller, not revving as high. I mentioned the shiver is cheaper. Shiver is 93.99, I think, 9,400 bucks. So it's like a little bit more than a F09, for example. Uh, a little bit less than a. Triumph Street Triple, if memory serves. The Dorso Duro is uh, 10999 So 11 grand for a Dorso Duro 900. And I suppose you get some stuff for 11 grand that you don't get elsewhere for 11 grand, like this pretty dope dash. Speaking of dope dash, we're gonna go over to ABS, flick it to off, and then hit select for what I hope are obvious reasons. Anyway, you get this nice big dash, which is nice, um, but I do think you get something similar on a Duke 690, 690 Duke rather, do you not? I think you kind of do. Um, it's a roughly the same price, a little less I think. Um, which is why I think the Shiver again, you know, Shiver has the same dash um, and it costs 1500 bucks less, basically a little bit more, so um, sort of a better value I think. And uh, would I get this instead of a Ducati Hyper? Maybe, but I get it instead of a Husky 701. Uh, I don't know. 701 is like really light and really super moto-y. This is definitely more versatile bike than the 701 is, but um, I don't know. It's kind of a tough call. Willies, yes, plenty, plenty of willies. And of course, you can go into the dash and turn off ABS like we just did, which means Supermoto all day long. I just do not get sick of a Supermoto with no ABS on. That's just one of the best things in motorcycling. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. Holy goodness, whole pile of bikes out here. You wanna see an MC commute anywhere here? We got a GSX-S250 or a GSX-S250R or whatever. Ruckus, R9T Pure. What else we got? Whole bunch of CRFs, Africa Twin, Alta. Yeah, I don't know, you guys let me know what you wanna see and we'll try to make it happen. And there she blows. Pretty cool bike, no? Like I said, I think it sounds better on the road than it does in a parking lot, but it still sounds pretty meaty. Pretty cool. So there you have it. Dorso Duro 900. That was a really fun commute. I've been on this bike for a couple weeks now, and uh, it's really fun. <laughs> As supermotos will be. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. And uh, yeah, leave your leave your comments below. Uh, you can look for articles on the Shiver and the Dorso Duro below. And um, yeah, see you on the next one. Okay, peace out.